There are three types of different controls in ZBrush. I button, I slider, and I switch. In this video, we're going to cover I button. I can copy out this code and go back to my Sublime text, open a new file, paste it there, bring this, turn this into Z script, or if you can do this, I I button pressing tab it should give you something similar in sublime text you can select everything and pressing control and left bracket or right bracket you can move all this code back and forward like that I buttons can be used for several things not just buttons for example in this plugin we have these buttons here this is a button and is is being used just to give information and they can be used as a separator. They can even open a web page. And we, we, this is using the um, file execute command. And I'll show you how to do that in future videos. And for example, in the ZRush Photoshop, this is also a button where you can use an image. It's using an image, it doesn't do anything, but it gives you an image. So it's a good way to create separators and to make your plugins more presentable. Now the way I like to set up my buttons is by having my button name and the pop-up info text up here with the I button. And I usually have the commands right here and all this stuff usually down here. And you'll see what I mean as we go along. Let me just move this down and I'll use a comment, a block comment like we mentioned in the previous video. Let's create our first button. And the most simple way of creating our button, just say I button, and this will be my t the text for my button first, after my first comma. And if I don't want a pop-up text, I can just leave it blank there. And this is the simplest button you could have create. If I open this file, let me save it. And I'm gonna save it as a text file, plain text. <coughs> I'll just change this again. The script. So I saved it as a text file and if I open this file in ZBrush and these load and reload buttons I have them down here so I'll just use that. Let's bring this here. I'll navigate to my folder and I open up my button. Open. Now if I open up the tutorial view because I only named my my button just like that it will pop up in the tutorial view and it's here so the pop-up will say scripted button click here in order to execute the script action because we did not give a pop-up text to it and if I press it obviously nothing happens because there's no commands in here if I want to have spaces and special characters inside of my button I need to place my button name inside of quotes so in Sublime Text, I can select a text. And if I press Shift, if I press my quote, it will place everything inside the text, the selected text inside of quotes. So I can have spaces in my button now. If I save this and I go back to ZBrush and ZScript Reload, now I have some space between my and button. Now, because I didn't place a path in my button name, my button is going to show up in the C script uh, tutorial view. If I do place a path for it, for example, if I say Z plug in my button and I save this, control S, and I reload, the button is gone from here and it shows up in my Z plugin palette. There's my button. That doesn't do anything. So if, let's say, I want to place this button inside of um, Misc Utilities, I can say my button, save that, reload, and it shows up inside of Misc Utilities. So you kind of get the picture. So I can place this anywhere. I can even place it in Alpha, for example. Uh, if I reload, my button. 
So you can place buttons anywhere in the ZBrush interface by using this system. The same goes for eye sliders, eye switch, and eye sub palette. An eye sub palette is just a, a menu. So it's this is an eye sub palette. This is an eye sub palette. This is one. For example, uh, Nix Tools has a bunch of sub palettes inside, and these are all the sub palettes that he plays here. For the most part, as you're writing down your scripts, you'll just name your button without a path, and that will make your button go to the tutorial view. When you're ready, you can then use the, the path to make it the Z plugin or to place it in any menu that you like. In later videos, I'll show you how to create a Z plugin and work on it as you develop it. But for now, we're just going to focus on buttons. So after the second comma, you got the pop-up info text. And this is just going to give uh, information to the user what the button does. If you need quotes in this text, you can have uh, the single quote. And if I reload, I have a single quote there. Now you can use line breaks in the info text. For example, uh, a common practice is to say the button title and then do a backslash and for new line break. And then anything I have in here will have auto line breaks. So if I save this and reload here, you can see what happens. So my button, I have the line break right there. And everything after is going to have auto line break, as you can see. After the name of the button, name path button, and uh, info text, you can have your commands. And I'm going to use one of the simplest commands, and it's one of the ways to output information to the user or to yourself. And this is by opening and closing brackets, and say note, comma, and then you can write something. I usually put this inside of inside of quotes. Now when I press my button, I get this message, hello world. Now you can determine the time of this note. And we go through notes later, but I can say one second. And it stays there for a second and goes away. Now let's see the rest of it. So we've done so far we've done the commands and the command that we used was note. And the rest of it I usually place down here. So initially disabled. This is how you can use buttons to as separators, for example. Because if I place it as initially disabled, and I just do a comma, and one means initially disabled, and zero, it's enabled. As you can see here, zero enabled, and that's the default. Non-zero can be one on any other number is disabled. So if it is disabled, and I save it reload, the button becomes grayed out. And if, if I press it, nothing happens. Now I could use a zero here or just leave it blank and move on to the next command. And the next one is button pixels in width. And auto width is the default, which is zero. Non-zero is a specified width. Now, if I do, for example, 100, that's 100 pixels. And if I just load it up here, reload, 100 pixels is the size of the button right now, but I can also use percentage, and percentage you can start with zero dot, or just dot, and dot one per dot ten percent, and that that means it's ten percent of wherever the button is. So, for example, in these buttons here on on my decimator. This button is 0.5%, this button is 0.5% as well. So they're using half the size, each one is using half the width of this plugin, of this box here. So if I, I used 0.1 there, let me just save this, Control S, and reload, and that's 1%. So percentage is always uh, preferable uh, than using pixels. Unless you're using uh, an old interfaces, and we we'll get that, we'll get to that later on. Let's just leave it there, 100 pixels here right for now. That's the button width. Then, before you get to the button height, you also have optional hotkey, which will allow you to give an hotkey to to your button. Now, this is something that we don't usually do, but you can do it if you like. 
Uh, I'm going to leave this uh, link, the link for this web page uh, on the description below. And what it does is that you press any key on your keyboard and it will give you the key codes for that key. For example, I pressed A and the key down event is the one that I want here. So I can just, A is 65. So if I place this as my auth key here, 65, press save. Now I reload this and I press A, it triggers the button. After that, we have the button icon, which is the image. Like you can see here on my decimator, I have this image here. And this is a PSD file. So the way you can set, set this up is you have to give the path, a relative path for the PSD file. Let's just do that. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'll just create a new file here. And let's say I want a button that is 100. By 100, I'll say create. So, so this is just for a quick dirty example, and I can just save it as it is. So, control S, and I'll save it where I had in the same folder here, so I, I don't have to put a path, but. I might as well do a new folder. Usually, you have stuff in a new folder when you get to the Z plug to create a Z plugin. So I'll just call this my data folder and save it as my hello button. Save. So I'm saving it as a PSD file. So it's in there. Same place I have my button. In there, hello PSD file. So now all I have to do is inside of quotes, say data forward slash hello dot PSD. Now I made this button 100 pixels high uh, width and the final command here is the width in uh, the height actually in pixels so i'm gonna say 100 that's the size of the image now let's see how that looks reload there we go there's our button as you can see there's transparency i thought this would be a png image in when i when i started the scripting but no a psd file is fine it works on windows and mac so to change the the text of different colors you can use rgb color codes uh, starting with uh, 0x and then your RGB color code. In Photoshop, for example, if you open up a color here, uh, you can choose a color here and I'll just press that color. And if I press only web colors, it will give me this color code. So I can copy this. And after my 0x, I can paste that code in there, save. And if I reload, my button is in red now. Let's say if I want to change some of that text right there, I can do the same just by, if I control and click select the text here in Sublime Text, I'll be copying it. So if I place this code here, save, I get this result. So anything after the code will be will have the will will have that color. So if I wanted my text to go, uh, let's say just for my button have be in red and the rest be in white, for example. Color code for white is six Fs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Save that. Reload. And there you go. Now this color will not work for the name of the button, unfortunately. So forget about trying that. And I think we covered it all. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all the information you need to know about the command I button. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Gumroad. And I'll see you in the next video.